Hello everybody, this is Ira Dubey. Thank you so much for subscribing to our channel. If you haven't done so, you know what to do. There's a green button right here. Just click it and subscribe now. A dedicated businessman, a family man, a man I am very lucky to call my mentor and my father. World events all revolve around five things. M O N E Y. Why sell our company? We make a great return. How much money do we need? Do you want to be the richest guy in the cemetery? Okay, so I'm happy to say you don't need to be an investment banker, you don't need to be in the world of finance and you don't need to really understand the term, though I will explain it, to appreciate and enjoy the latest film to hit theatres. I'm talking about Nicholas Jericho's Arbitrage. Now, arbitrage in the economic financial sense of the word is basically the, the simultaneous buying and selling of a, a sort of a financial instrument, a, the same financial in, in, instrument to make a profit. Now, it sounds far more complicated than it is and it, it's really not it's something that's important to the film as such. You're, if you do understand it and if you want to understand it, there are various parallels and a lot of symbolism that you can find with the title in the film itself, though I would have really gone with a different title altogether after seeing the film. But coming, coming basically back to the plot, I thoroughly enjoyed arbitrage. Being someone who's not a numbers person, who's n who's never been fond of math, I can tell you at the outset, this is basically an intriguing financial thriller, quietly told with a steely sort of gritty undertone to it, with an evenness to it, with a smoothness to it. It's really a film about this one man, Robert Miller, played to the T with a such maturity, such sort of commitment and so such a wonderful perf performance delivered by of course Richard Gere who's I think given one of his finest performances in the last 10 years in this role um, and basically it's a psyche of this man and the journey of this man he uh, he appears before us as this almost perfect, uh, affluent, typical New York banker, uh, billionaire, uh, on the verge of even though there's a recession going on, even though there are problems, he's a committed go-getter, he's a hard worker, he's finding a way to kind of do this merger for his company, he's on the brink of that as the film opens, uh, it's the verge of his 16th, 60th birthday, his family life seems perfect, his, his financial career seems perfect and, and about to go, you know, uh, uh, expand and become even bigger and better and just when you think things are going just fine and you're introduced to that world of typical New York world of those bankers that we all sort of hear about and think about you suddenly uh, his, you suddenly hear his wife uh, telling him telling his wife played by Susan, Susan Sarandon also wonderful in the film that that he has to go for some kind of a work venture and boom there you have it he has a mistress who's this young artist who he kind of supports and takes care of, care of. nothing wrong with that even till now as the film kind of takes you along, and I love Jarecki's uh, direction of it, he's also written the film himself, um, there's an understated quality to the entire film, there's a quietness to it, but there's a steely grittiness that's almost cold and almost detached in the way he tells his story. And that's really what reflects the hero of the story. And frankly to me, this is the story of this man. So it's a, it's a detached, cool tone to the film, which I really like. And at the same time, it manages to completely suck you in. It becomes very gripping to watch. And just when you think things are just moving along fine, you don't really know what's going to happen. Crash, boom, bang, something goes massively wrong in the, in Miller's personal life, which of course has repercussions in his, in his career and his professional life as well, which he must basically cover his tracks and try to protect himself and try to kind of solve the problem. Uh, enter a whole host of new characters, whether it's a police detective played by Tim Roth or whether it's a, a young boy named Jimmy who happens to be an employer's son, an ex-employer's son, Miller's ex-employer's son, who happens also to be African-American and the film has a lot to say in a quiet, non-pushy, non-invasive, non-melodramatic way about racial discrepancies, about power and about the police system and about corruption and how wealth and power can really you know take over the police system and where, where does justice really come in so the film has a lot to say about all these things but at the end of the day to me more than anything it's about this man's personal and moral sort of journey because no matter what happens and i like the fact that he's, he's answerable for what he does the, the rich and powerful man doesn't get away you know stock free in this one though he, he he manages to solve his own problems in whatever way, which I won't tell you more about. What, what's most important to me is the psyche of this man himself. There's a beautiful moment in the film where he's talking to one of his family members, and there's a real turning point in the film, so I won't tell you which family member. And he says, uh, money, you know, and he's talking about money and what why he did what he did, and he's covering his tracks, and there are loopholes, and, you know, he committed some fraud, and he committed some crime. And he says, you know, but, you know, but it, it generates money, and there's so much money, and money is God. And the way he said that, that I mean, that firstly, that performance in that scene was stellar. But that just gave me a lot of insight into and and what Jarecki is trying to say and what the film tries to say about what kind of a world and generation and sort of uh, sensibility that human beings are now living with and under, where money kind of rules it all. And at the end of the day, we tend to forget even our other priorities and actually become 
internally, if not professionally and financially, internally quite hollow. So I think that in that sense, this one is definitely worth a watch. Ira says catch it. You are not my partner. You work for me. You brought this to our door. Everything I do is for us, for this family. Now you're telling me how to run my business? This isn't about your business. This is our life.